Hey folks, welcome back to Combo Class. I'm Demotro, and today I want to show you some interesting things I figured out about ways you can trick a calculator, by which I mean mathematical expressions you can type into common calculators and have them give you the wrong answer. When I was playing around with this, I found all sorts of different varieties of calculator mistakes, and we're going to build up from ones that are a bit more predictable, like rounding errors, for example, to errors that are just absurd, the calculator giving an answer that's the completely wrong number. The main calculator I'll be showing mistakes on today is what I would guess is probably the most universally used calculator in the world, the built-in calculator on the search engine Google. If you search calculator here on the most popular search engine, it leads you directly to this calculator, and in many cases, if you search an equation through Google in any way, this calculator pops up first, showing you its answer before it shows you any other other calculators or any websites that mention the equation you searched. In addition to being so commonly used itself, the Google Calculator also seems to be programmed using the same code as several other online calculators I tested. Altogether, if we uncover any mistakes this type of calculator makes, they're mistakes that have the potential to trick people all across the globe. In this video, I may also sometimes need to compare it to a better calculator, and for that, I'll use the one built into the website Wolfram Alpha. To be clear, this video is not sponsored by any calculator company, but the Wolfram Alpha calculator is actually pretty good at either giving you the correct answer or a close approximation of it. Other calculators will do other things, although many will be similar, and I would love if some of you, while you watch this video, get out your own calculator you have lying around somewhere, whether it's one from school or the built-in one on your phone, and follow along, seeing if it makes the same mistake mistakes or does something different. Anyway, let's jump into it. When I was a kid and I was bored in class with a calculator around, I loved to play around looking for different types of error message, like a divide by zero error or a syntax error or whatever types of error I could find, almost like I was making a little collection of them. But as a kid, I never realized the degree to which calculators can make mistakes that they don't warn you about with any error message. You see, sometimes a calculator might not realize it's making a mistake. And recently, I found this whole crazy web of calculator mistakes. These experiments began a few months ago when I was on the Google Calculator here and typed in something along the lines of 5 to the power of 5 to the power of 5, not necessarily expecting an exact answer, maybe just an estimate of its size using scientific notation or something. But I was very surprised to find that Google claimed this equaled in infinity. Not an error message or anything, just the word infinity. Now, infinity can be the answer to some mathematical questions, but definitely not 5 to the power of 5 to the power of 5, which actually equals this large but finite number. Now, with any calculator, there's going to be some size of number that's too large for it to properly understand or store or display. But with many calculators, when they meet a number too big, they give you some sort of error message. Or at least call it something like undefined, not just infinity. And after some further investigating, I found that this Google Calculator always answers infinity when it encounters a number larger than a certain size. And that size isn't even preposterously large, like the number 10 to the power of 500. I can figure out that would look like a 1 followed by 500 zeros, but the Google Calculator says it's infinity. And similarly, when this calculator encounters a fraction too tiny for itself to handle, it says it equals zero. But this is just easy mode. We can take it further. When I saw these things, it made me wonder what other mistakes might be hiding in this calculator. 
Since it thought tiny numbers were equal to zero, I decided to try some numbers that were a tiny amount off from some whole number. This type of number that's close to a whole number but not quite is called an almost integer, and this calculator is really bad at dealing with them. In fact, you don't even need to use an equation to trick them in this way. If you just type in an almost integer and hit equals, the calculator here says, it equals the whole number that it obviously doesn't. I'm not sure if this is just based on their internal memory or if any of this relates to how much room their display is programmed to show, but in any case, numbers can lose their fractional tail, and the degree to which this happens is also based on how large the rest of the number is. Like a smaller number, like one point something, will need its fractional tail to be really small for it to be fully lost, whereas with a larger number that has more digits to the left of the decimal point, even a significant fractional tail, like 0.4, can get lost. Look at this 0.4 just vanishing here. Now, this is far from the worst mistake I found here, but I do want to take a moment to dive into some of the misleading implications of this. And although we could generate a number that's purposefully really close to a whole number, I find it more interesting when this type of number emerges naturally from an equation where this calculator could trick some human who just happens to search the wrong thing. Let's check out some almost integers that are related to the number pi. There are various fractions that can act like approximations of the number pi. And if I divide one of these approximations by exactly pi, the ratio should be close to one, but not exactly. And with a rougher approximation, this calculator knows the ratio isn't exactly one, but with a better approximation, it says it is exactly one, which implies that pi is exactly equal to that fraction something we know is mathematically impossible. I also found something interesting related to pi on the graphing calculator Desmos. If I make an equation based on a rough pi approximation, there are coordinates that look similar to pi. And if I use a good enough approximation, we see the pi symbol because the graphing calculator got tricked and thinks that point landed exactly on pi. Now, how about some almost integers that involve the number pi and the classic irrational number e? Here's another expression that involves pi, e, and square roots, and this turns out to equal something close to a whole number, so the Google Calculator makes it look like it's exactly equal to a whole number. The Google Calculator is just not as precise as many other calculators, but with this type of mistake, at least the calculator is giving us an answer that's in close proximity to the right answer, like a rounded version of it. And and when I looked deeper, I found some stranger mistakes. Now, if we look at the number E, some really weird things start happening. The number E can be defined as the limit we would get if we took this expression, one plus one over N, all in parentheses to the power of N, as n goes to infinity. Now, already, we have to be very careful when we think about how these going to infinity acts, because if we imagine them separately, what happens to the parentheses part as it goes to infinity, and what happens to the exponent, it would end up looking like one to the power of something really big. However, as this gets larger and the exponent gets larger, it grows to a bit larger than one. It grows toward the number E, which is about 2.7 something. This reaches E at its infinite limit, and so with any finite value of N plugged in, the answer should be a little less than E, but with a large enough value of N really close to E. Now on the Google calculator, at first it approaches the number E like it should, but there's a certain size of N we can 
plug-in that tricks this calculator into evaluating the whole thing as equal to one. And I think it's getting tricked in a similar way to the human misconception I said to watch out for earlier, where it's evaluating the parentheses bit as being one plus basically zero all to some power. So I can sort of understand why it thinks this equals one with a large enough n plugged in, but that's not the weirdest thing going on here. In between it approaching e and it crashing down to one, there's a size of n I can plug in where the calculator says this equals more than three. In fact, as I increase the value of n that I'm plugging in on this calculator, First it approaches E like it should, then it dips a little lower than it's supposed to, then it jumps way higher than it's supposed to, and then it crashes down to one. By the way, this is one of those cases where even if you're not already on this calculator, if you Google this expression, you get led directly to this calculator with its wrong answer. Now, when I saw this about E, I knew that we could probably take this further. So I decided to see how far I could take this. I realized that by making variations of this formula for E, I could create wrong answers that were as wrong as I wanted. Like taking this E formula with enough zeros that the Google calculator thinks it equals one. If I raise that whole thing to the second power, then the Google calculator sees that as one squared, so still one, whereas really it's closer to E squared. And if I raise it to the 50th power, the Google calculator calculator still says it equals one when really the answer is massive. I also played around and found some other formulas that cause the Google calculator to give a result that is vastly different from the Wolfram Alpha calculator. In some of these cases, I'm not positive that Wolfram Alpha is giving a correct answer. I'm sort of just trusting that, but the calculators give such different answers that at least one of them, presumably the Google calculator, must be getting something very wrong. Like here's an equation that the Google calculator says equals zero and the Wolfram Alpha calculator says equals a massive number. I even found some cases where the calculators disagree on what sign, positive or negative, the answer is. Here's one that the Google calculator says is negative and the Wolfram Alpha calculator says the same thing is positive. And here's one that's the other way around. Can you believe that? One of these calculators must be giving an answer that's on the wrong side of zero as the correct answer. Overall, this shows us that calculators can be a lot more wrong than I ever thought. So I guess we should be more careful with some calculators. Now I'm not saying that it's Google's responsibility to create the best calculator in the world, but I do think that either they should put a little more time and effort into their calculator, trying to make it closer to the level of the Wolfram Alpha one, for example, or they should stop making the Google calculator be the first result whenever you search many equations now, I bet I could find even stranger mistakes, but after finding all this, I just wanted to put together this episode. I will keep playing around with this and maybe show some other things I'll find in a live stream on my bonus Demotro channel or something. And let me know if you find any interesting mistakes yourself. And that's about all for today's combo class lesson. I hope you learned some interesting things and maybe thought of some experiments you're gonna try yourself on any of these calculators or other calculators. And special thanks to the people who help make my videos possible, such as my Patreon supporters and YouTube members on my other Demotro channel. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you again soon in the next episode.